Hi everyone, I'm here. Um, so I've improved the, the amount of light, but unfortunately it's coming from one direction. Um, so this part of me will be a bit in shadow, but we'll just have to cope with it the best we can. So this evening's video, um, this live, uh, is focusing on stretchies and other things you can do with them. I'll be starting off with the normal way of carrying and putting it on that I show everyone, but I'll be showing you a few other things you can do with it uh, to make it interesting. Oh, Caroline's here. Hello, Caroline. Thank you for saying hello. If you're here, do say hello. Um, and feel free to ask questions as we go. If I will go back and answer them all for the second bit at the end if I don't spot them as we're going. Um, but do say hello. So, plan for this evening is, uh, once I've finished chatting away, I'll talk to you about the different types of stretcher you can get. Um, then I will show you how to put one on. Then I'll show you how you put them in a normal carry. Um, it's called pocket wrap cross carry. Um, so we'll talk about that. Uh, oh, there's Lindsay. Oh, good. She told me earlier she was going to put me up on her TV on a Chromecast. So apparently I'm massive and in widescreen. So yeah. Hi, Lindsay. There we go. Hopefully that didn't scare you or the baby too much. Uh, oh, Jenny's here as well. Hi, Jenny. Lovely. Um, so after I've shown you the traditional pocket wrap cross carry, then I'll move on to showing you how to pop the baby in slightly differently so that it makes feeding a lot easier, be it breast or bottle. Um, then after that, uh, oh, Jenny's feeding while she's watching this. So that's great. Hello, multitasking. That's what it's all about. Um, after that, I'll move on and I'll show you how to reposition the baby into a, oh, it's changed colour, how to reposition the baby into a seated sideways position, um, uh, just so you have another option. Um, then we'll go through outward facing in a stretchy wrap. There's two different ways of doing it, um, neither of which are, are particularly <laughs> brilliant but we'll get on to that um when we get to it and i'll very quickly show you how to back carry in a stretchy and we'll talk about the risks involved um with that as well once i've gone through all of that we'll then uh just have a general q a um talking through uh any questions that you have from what we've done or any questions that you've got um about baby wearing in general and this time of year and stuff um so yeah, right, without further ado then, let's get a stretchy. So tonight I'm gonna to be using uh, a lift stretchy wrap. Um, I do retail these, so that is another reason that I'll be using this one. Um, unfortunately, my Joy & Joe um, Beetlejuice stretchy wrap is out on hire. Otherwise, I would be using that one too because that is super duper stretchy and loads of bamboo. Um, so it's absolutely beautiful to wrap with as well. They're my two favorites. Um, but yeah, so there are two different kinds of stretchy wrap that you can get. You can get a one-way stretchy and a two-way stretchy. And a one-way stretchy only stretches one way. You see what they did there with the name. They made it quite complicated. Um, so a one-way stretchy typically only stretches this way. Okay. A two-way stretchy, however, stretches that way as well you do get so-called five-way stretchies or starway stretchies all that means is is that they also stretch on the diagonal okay and that just adds in an extra layer of stretch um which can be much more supportive but also means you need to be a lot more careful when you're tightening um in the library i only have two-way stretchies uh, for hire because they're a lot easier to put on they're a lot more forgiving for first timers um, who, you know, you've got a newborn, the last thing you want to do is be struggling with something. So a two-way stretchy makes it a lot, lot easier. If you're unsure whether your wrap is a one-way or a two-way, let me know what brand you've got and I'll be able to tell you because brands typically just stick to one or two. They don't ever really cross over. Um, oh, Caroline's watching Miss Spencer, so that's good. Okay, so how to put on a stretchy wrap. First thing is you need to unravel it. OK, and then people are always freaked out by how long it is and how much fabric there is. Do not be scared. It is only a piece of material <laughs> and you're going to be wrapping it around you several, several times. OK, so you don't need to worry about that. I used to really like uh, tying it on at home and then uh, wearing it when I went out. And my backup lights have just failed. So it's going to be pretty dark from now on, I'm afraid. Um, so 
Uh, we have our middle label, our middle marker. Okay, all of them have a middle marker. They're all more subtle, more obvious than others. Do you mind putting on the main light? Thank you. Uh, sorry, Neil's just uh, being my lighting assistant quickly. Is that a bit better? I stand really far back, then you can't see what's going on. Right, you'll just have to turn up the contrast on your phones, I'm afraid. Um, oh, hello, Lorna, you're here as well. I was just explaining, my Joy and Joe's out on hire, which is why I don't have it with me. Um, but yes, I'm using my lift. So, you get your middle label, that goes over the middle of your chest. For us ladies, we use our boobs as a guide, so it's nice and high up. Then we cross it over behind our backs, like so, up, over one shoulder. Same with the other side. You can do the swirl if you prefer to get it over your shoulder. I do have videos of this on YouTube and on my Facebook page, so you can practice at home as well. So we gather that up into a rope, we take our two shoulder ropes and we put them through vertically and those lights have just come back on. This is going to be a very weird live with my lighting going in and out. We're haunted, Neil's just said we're haunted so yeah we'll just have to make do. So we pull those nice and tight, cross them over, take them behind your back and then if you're not pregnant like me, you should be able to bring them back to the front and tie them off. But because of the bump, I have to tie it behind me. And you just tie it in a knot, like so. From here, you then double check. Oh, there's Vicky. Hello, Vicky. Nice to see you too. So we then come underneath and we pull the stretchy and we get as much slack out as we can, because I can guarantee you, once your baby is in there, if there's any slack, baby's gonna be bobbing down, 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 down. So for those people who have worn stretchies and don't feel like they're tight enough, don't feel like they're secure, it will purely be because you haven't got all the slack out. And if you just do a good tug, you can make sure you've got it all out. So you look at the volume between the wrap, between your chest, and you think to yourself, is that enough room for my baby? If you need more room, loosen your knot, feed a bit more fabric in. If it's, um, if it's looking too tight, uh, too big, then you just feed a bit in there and tie it up into your knot to get it out the way. Okay, that's all you need to do. So, I'm going to go get a baby and show you how to put it in the normal way, which is a pocket wrap cross carry. Okay, back in a second. <sighs> There we go. I left him on the dining room table. <laughs> I should have had him in here. Okay, so baby goes up on one shoulder, hand under the bum, making sure they're nice and curved and they're happy and settled on you. You come underneath one side, like so, and then we tuck the leg in, into the knee pit, move baby to the other shoulder, and then we come underneath, in, to the knee pit and this is the key bit we let baby sit down okay so the knees hook up uh, the baby's arms come up hopefully they'll want to rest their head sideways on but a lot of babies like to face plant in your cleavage but that just happens so we make sure they're sitting down can you see how far out this bum is okay a lot of people come to me with their babies in stretches like this and they're completely flat and dangling that's not how we want babies positioned in a stretchy. Your baby has just spent nine months growing in a ball shape. Okay, so we want to encourage that shape and keep it going. There's a reason we grow in a ball shape. It's the best shape for the hips, the best shape for the spine development, best shape for muscle development, absolutely everything. So we want to keep that shape going. Okay. Uh, oh, Lindsay's commented, I like to have my stretchy quite tight. Can it be too tight? If you've done your stretchy too tight, You'll find, and the light's gone off again, uh, you'll find that your baby's head will be up in your throat or they'll be up on one shoulder on the side. The ideal positioning is to have baby with their ear level with your heart and that they're close enough to kiss. That's the ideal, okay? If your baby ends up there but you're both comfortable and happy, then it's fine. If your baby ends up there but you're both comfortable and happy, then it's fine. Okay, so you, you can't ever do it too tight that you're going to squish baby. <laughs> um, it will purely be about positioning and how high up baby is on you. Okay, 
Uh, oh, Laura's here as well. Hello, Laura. Nice to see you too. So once we're here, you find your underside, okay, your underpass, which for me is this side. You take the inside seam and you spread it all the way over to the other knee, tucking the head in if baby's quite sleepy. Then we take the other inside seam, hooking it all the way over to the other knee, up like so. Now, of course, you've noticed straight away that I've covered baby's airway, which we shouldn't ever do. So we come <laughs> underneath, we take this inside hem, we pull it back on itself, we give it a nice big tug, and then it can sit on our shoulder like that, creating this lovely right angle, which goes straight down there as well. So baby's airway is now nice and clear. Baby is now nice, safe, protected, perfect M shape. We come underneath, we get our top layer, we come over each leg in a rope, we take just that top hem and pin it into place like so. Okay, so that's a pocket wrap cross carry. That's the typical carry that I show everyone as their first and foremost of their, the basic carry that everyone learns. Um, you can pre-tie it, you can put it on and then go to the shop and then um, just get baby straight out of the car, put them straight in. And um, then you don't have to faff with it in a car park, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's your normal stretchy. So the feeding carry, also known as the double hammock. Okay, so we take that off, we unpeel our layers and we lift baby out. So for a double hammock, the great news is we don't actually have to do anything different. We just put baby in in a slightly different way. Okay, so baby, oh, hang on. We slip off our over layer. So I've got an over layer and an under layer. Okay, don't know if you can see that. So my over layer, I'm going to slip off before I get baby. Oh, Lottie's here too, her favourite doll. She was here for a consult this afternoon and she fell in love with this newborn doll because uh, he's much smaller than her toddler. So yeah, so baby up on the opposite shoulder and this time we're going to pop both legs through like so and then we spread the whole thing over baby's back making sure we're going knee to knee and tucking baby's head in for a moment as well once we're there we get the drop side we get this back up on our shoulder we bring it over baby's leg and we spread it over as well. Okay, again, flipping the shoulder to create that twist. Okay, so that's a double hammock. Looks very similar to the pocket wrap and you do need to put the third layer over the top. However, for feeding, you would take that third layer down and then to feed, you simply slip off the shoulder of the boob you're going to feed from. Or if you're using a bottle, you can just do your preferred side, of course. And then all we do is very simply, the hand goes inside under baby's bum. This hand goes on the outside leg. We swivel baby's seat like so. Baby can then lie down. We uncover baby's head. Because when baby is feeding, we should never have baby's head covered. Make sure we're still cradling baby. Making sure the stretchy is still in the knees. And then baby can feed. Make sure both hands of baby are on either side of the breast so that they can easily push away when they need to. It's not completely hands-free to feed like this. You will still need one hand on the back of the neck, but you can walk around with one hand free and I've just spotted I've got that foot caught there. There we go, that's better. So you can walk around with one hand free and baby can feed, okay? 
do not let baby sleep in this position it will not be comfortable for them or for you it will hurt so once baby's finished you get baby back up into the upright position so you just simply bring baby back up make sure those legs are nice and even we find our other pass bring that up like so bring it over baby again flip the shoulder tuck baby's head in and then we can bring this top pass over like so bring that up and pin it in oh, we've got a few more people join lucy's now watching as well as is amy hi guys nice to see you so that is our feeding carry uh, also known as the double hammock carry um, so I do have a video for that on my YouTube channel as well. Make sure you subscribe so you see our weekly videos that we upload. Um, right, so now onto some fun stuff, some out there kind of stuff, which you probably won't have ever seen done before. Um, so we're going to kick off with the seated sideways. So we'll take baby out of our double hammock. Oh, baby's leg sneaked in there. Like so, lift baby out. And again, brilliantly, you tie it the same way for this one too. You just put baby in a different position. That's another great thing about stretchies. You tie it one way, the way you put baby in dictates what you're going to do. Okay? Uh, Kelly has asked, what stretchy is that one you've just used? This is a lift stretchy. Um, that I do retail, they are on the uh, website, I have them at drop-ins, consultations, everything like that. They are available to purchase from me. Members, you get 15% off as well. Right, so, seated sideways. Uh, so, I keep picking up babies, I'm too excited. So, again, your overpass. This, get that untwisted, slips off your shoulder, so you've just got your underpass in place. This is going to be the main hammock that baby is going to go in. Okay? So baby comes up on your non pass shoulder. We guide both the legs through. We come up over baby's back, keeping a hand under the bum, and then we gently encourage baby to sit down seated sideways okay so just so you can see inside you can just about see that so we've got one knee higher than the other the outside knee is higher than the inside knee okay that's best for the pelvis in this kind of position we make sure we're in the knees okay we make sure we come up with this and make sure we are round the neck you can put baby's head in however you need to be extra, extra vigilant with newborns especially that that is not bringing the chin down onto the chest. That will close the airway and baby and you will not have a good time. So do try with this position to keep that uh, behind the neck. I've got a few more questions. Uh, Lucia, what age can a baby sit like this? As old as your back can take it. <laughs> um, they were all weight tested. Uh, up to a huge amount it's just up to whether or not your back um can take it and how tight you can get it um kelly has asked she's still got the close caboose still can't get used to it it always gives me a bad back rosalie is 10 months now time to size up 10 months plenty of time time to size up move on to the next step um it's stretchy fabric so it will take ages to get it properly properly tight um so move up kelly come see me we'll find you something else so once we've got that underpass on and baby is in cradled safely with one leg up one leg down we're in the knee pits we're covering that shoulder we're round the head both arms are up okay we then get our top layer back up on our shoulder we bring it over both of the feet so we're back in that knee pit we then spread this all the way over the bum again coming up again to cross at the neck okay and then we are in like that then we get our top layer we pull that out we bring it over both of the feet 
and we come up and we pin at the neck okay so this is our seated sideways position okay and you can wear baby like this nice and hands free uh, it's just another position for them um, to wear them in uh, it's up to you <laughs> as to how you wear them that lights getting really annoying um, but yeah I just realized the time as well <laughs> this is taking longer than I thought uh, okay so uh, what we're doing next outward facing right the outward facing carry so the problem with outward facing is that it's not great if they're under four months um, and it shouldn't be done because they don't have enough neck strength so you need to wait until they're four months old anyway before outward facing otherwise there's a huge risk of that chin to chest and the airways closing okay that said I personally am not a fan of outward facing for neurological development reasons and I always advise a hip carry but if you want to outward face I will show you how to outward face as safely as possible okay so to outward face in a stretchy this is going to look quite amusing <laughs> Uh, I haven't done this since training. Uh, I had a little practice earlier, but yeah. So this is what we do. Again, it's the normal carry, the normal way we put on the stretchy. And then we come on the front. Position baby so that you're not going to headbutt them if you sneeze, for example. And we hold them with their knees up nice and high. Okay, so we're still curved. We're still up in the knees. We keep one hand underneath to hold them in place. And you start off with your underneath side, okay? Arms need to be up. And all we do is cradle underneath the entire bum going to the knees. Arms up, okay? Then we come with the other side and we do the same thing. Bring this up like so. And then we get our top layer and we bring it up and we pin it there. I told you this would look weird. So, <laughs> so this is okay to do with a baby, but the problem with it is, is that it's not advisable to do with a very small baby, a very small newborn, because of the risk of your chest forcing that head down and then they can close that airway, okay? We don't wanna do that. What we want to do is to have our baby nice and upright, but some babies like to face out. Um, so the problem with this position is that you can't do this safely under four months for any length of time. Um, but the problem is, is once we get to four months, baby is then very strong. This is stretchy fabric, and all it takes is for one lunge from baby and they will pop out. Okay, so if you're going to outward face over four months and not in a stretchy, it's possible in a stretchy, doesn't mean it's the best tool for the job. And that's what most of baby wearing is about, is having the right tool for the job. Now I was gonna show you back carrying as well. Um, how much time have we got? We've still got a bit of time. Won't have much time for a Q&A though. I'll, crack I'll just do the back carrying, I'll do the back carrying. So, back carrying in a stretchy, absolutely safe um, to do once they are, well, you can do it from newborn, but I would only recommend to do that if you've been to see me so I can give you experience and guidance. Um, there's a specific way of getting newborns up on your back as well. Otherwise, this is perfectly safe to do from six months up to whatever age. You just need to be aware of the risks, which is the fact that it's stretchy and a baby, a toddler, could potentially flip themselves out. If they're a leaner, don't do it. Okay, so we take our middle label, we gather up, we come onto our shoulder and then we pull the fabric down so that when this comes round, under our arm, our middle label is near our hip. I did that a bit too far. Like so, okay? We then loop this up over our other shoulder. So we've created 
a nice loop. Those of you that have used a ring sling uh, will recognise this. This is our little pouch that we're going to put baby in now. Okay, so up we come. Sam, would you do a front carry in the caboo in a similar way? Kelly, Sam, I don't think you can outward face in a caboo. Some people have outward faced in a caboo. Um, and there is a position you can do, but it's not ergonomic and it's not recommended by the manufacturers. Um, we can have a chat about that next week, Sam, if you pop down to the drop-in. Um, but yeah, it's not ergonomic and it's not recommended by the manufacturers, but there are people that do it, so it's up to you. But again, please don't outward face if they're under four months, no matter what carry you use. So, the back carry. We're here, we tuck both legs through, and we sit baby down as if we are on a rope, like so. We bring the top hem up and then we pull this tight over our back, lifting it so that it tightens up around baby. Okay, and then we pin that between our legs. We gather up this front piece so it's nice and tight over baby's shoulders. Uh, that's just gone off centre, but you get the idea. It's there. So once we're here, we take both pieces nice and tight, okay, in a super tight circle, and we simply swing baby round our hip over, pulling them round until they are up on our back, okay? So once baby is there, we pin our long piece between our legs, we take this side piece, hook our elbow in, and we bring it up over our shoulder, like so. Once we're here, I could tie off, however, because it's a stretchy fabric, what I don't want to happen is for baby to flip themselves out, okay, which is possible with a stretchy. With a woven, no, but with a stretchy, it can purely because it's stretchy fabric, okay? So I'm gonna take this pass, and I'm gonna come round under baby's bum to really get those knees nice and safely in, like so, I'm going to come back up over this shoulder, okay, and then I'm going to pin that one between my legs, I'm going to take my other side, and I'm going to do the same thing with this side, okay, I'm going to come round with this over baby's bum to get those knees in there and feel that's caught on baby's back checking the mirror oh no we're there we're okay bring that over up the shoulder like so that I can take both of these pieces round over baby's legs cross back and then tie it off back here. So baby has now got three passes over them on the back, just like they do on the front, and they are on the back, nice and high up, nice and safe, so we can back carry we like and we can put snacks over the top, um, like we saw in that video. So that's a back carry. So that's five different things you can do with one stretchy and one method of, well, Two methods of tying on because the back carry we have to do it differently. The other four you can do them all the same. So I'll just take baby off and then we will move to the sofa so we can have a nice chat about, uh, well, anything you like really. So unpeel all of this, making sure to keep the tension, bringing it round, slip that off the shoulder. And then we just pull baby round, like so, there, and then we can put baby down. Ah, right, so I'm just going to bring you over towards here so I can sit on the sofa. There we are, nicely positioned. Right, so um, technically we're meant to finish by now because it's been 30 minutes. Um, so I'll just open it up if anyone's got any questions um, about anything we've just looked at or baby wearing in general. Um, I have been answering them as I've gone. If I've missed any, do quickly tell me and let me know. Oh, Sam's commented. 
Thanks. Weird as there are instructions for outward facing the instruction manual, but I didn't quite get it. I'm quite happy hip carrying now. Yeah, they're not great. Um, uh, yeah, it is possible, but again, at four months, it's much easier, more natural to do a hip carry than it is to have them facing out. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions? Um, I've got my display behind me of my personal stash, um, which I know people don't believe me is quite big, but is quite huge. Um, <laughs> mainly Joy and Joe and Jack and Rose um, for my wovens. Um, but, yeah. Any questions, guys? Kelly, oh, can you hit carry with a kaboo then? Yes, you can. Um, I don't have a kaboo to hand to be able to show you right now, but yes, you can do a hip carry with a kaboo. There's better carriers out there for doing a hip carry um, than a kaboo. Um, just like there's better carriers out there for outward facing, there's better carriers out there for back carrying. Um, it's picking the right tool for the job. Um, but yes, you can hip carry with a kaboo. Uh, Kelly, please can you remind me of your prices? It's all on the website. Um, www.worthingslinglibrary.co.uk go to one-to-one -one cons go to consultations select one-to-one -one consultations and it's all in there um, all broken down into prices um, of what we do Caroline I really need to come and see you with my sling is dropping Tuesday or Thursday dropping is every Thursday at St Paul's in Worthing Town Centre 10 till 12 um, do try and come earlier rather than later <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I do have a workshop um, every Tuesday morning. They're on a five-week rotating schedule, um, so you can come along when it's the right um, drop it uh, when it's the right workshop topic that you want to focus on. Again, they're all on the website. Just click on workshops, um, and they're all listed under there. You can book online as well. Members get a free workshop um, as part of their membership. Um, so, do we have any other questions? anything at all as I used to say to my students there's no such thing as a stupid question just an inappropriate one and that tended to get a laugh from teenagers um, but yeah any other questions no no any more it's not looking like it um, I think that's about it then. So our next one um, is on the 8th of March. Um, oh, pants, I can't remember what it was going to be. Um, oh, Laura, how do you roll your ring sling like the one behind you? <laughs> um, oh, I'm doing ring slings for the next one. Um, it's ring slings and breastfeeding positions and bottle feeding positions within a ring sling, how to tie it, how to use it to do feeding positions. So Laura, um, as part of that, I will show you how to make your ring slings nice and tidy like this and how to make them all beautiful. Um, yep, yeah, so I'll do that in the next video as well, in the next live, if you can wait a month, of course. Um, but otherwise, that's it, guys. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm probably going to go straight to bed now. Being pregnant uh, is knackering, as we all know. Um, um, so I will see you all very soon, hopefully. Take care and keep slinging. <laughs>